I don't normally do these, but I'm very excited about what just came in Amazon. So, time for an unboxing. All right, so kind of try to do this one-handed. Don't know how that's gonna work. So this is the Fuji Instax SQ1. I am a Instax fiend. I absolutely love everything that is Instax. Um, and what a lot of people might not know is that um, Fuji bought the Polaroid formula from Polaroid. Before they shut down so they actually have the original formula which is beautiful um, the Polaroid formula from Polaroid originals or um, impossible project look at that nice nice box it is a different formula because after Polaroid shut down they didn't keep any of the factories or anything so the formula is not exactly the same and the pictures sometimes turn out grainy looking they sometimes like um the film fades and other weird things you don't have that problem with fuji you get nice clear shots just like this so i'm gonna go, to, go ahead and open this seems pretty compact and i'll take a shot of my plant for y'all like i said i don't normally do unboxings but i figured today is as good as day as any to start so the first thing you get is batteries. Yes, batteries come included. That is always awesome. Second battery right here. And a little strap. I always love those. You don't want your camera to uh, fall while you're carrying around taking pictures. You got this manual, which is unneeded. Um, some more garbage, trash. I, I mean, I don't know why they put that stuff in there. And then, the man of the hour. But, there's also this little extra thumb grip thingy, which I will try out later. Not while I'm holding a phone in one hand. So we'll put the box aside. And... Here's our camera. Like I said, I got the blue color, which is kind of like a frosted blue color. And wow, that looks good. That looks good. The two pack of film is not available right now for whatever reason. So I had to buy the 60 pack, which was um, about $60 or about one cents each. So I'm going to go ahead and put so I have film put in here and then I'll take a couple of test shots so first let's put these batteries in we'll go through the whole process together you know let's see here they go plus side forward that way these CR batteries a lot of people don't like them because they're hard to find I personally enjoy them because they last a really long time. Um, so um, if you have some aversion to the CR batteries, don't, don't worry about it. These batteries last forever. It would be nice if it was lithium ion, but actually lithium batteries uh, have their problems as well. Uh, it's nice to just be able to recharge them. Like I said, I had already bought some film for this camera. I bought 60. Just to mess around. So I'm going to, let's go ahead and put a pack of film in and take a few pictures. This is the first time. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this one handed, but... I'm not a fancy, super famous YouTuber. I don't have all kinds of gear sitting around that I can hook cameras and phones and things like that up to. Okay. 
so getting the film in is pretty simple. You just line it up, yellow goes on top. And for some reason, I'm having a hard time getting it in. Okay, I'm going to have to, because I've never done it with one hand. Okay, it should just go right in. <laughs> I don't know what was going on that first time, but it goes right in. So, uh, the cool thing about this camera is you twist to turn it on. So, twist to on. And now it's on. In order to get your first film out, and I guess it's going to flash until the, the flash is ready, you're going to press the camera button one time to get that exposure out. The, um, not exposure, the film protector. Now that the film protector is out, we should see that it says right here, 10, 10 exposures. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it, turn this one more time to selfie mode. On selfie mode, you have a little um, camera, uh, not camera, <laughs> of course you have a camera. You have a little mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and take a selfie here. See if I can. There we go. So we got our selfie. And I'll take one more picture. And we'll put this to the side. Let that develop. I'm going to take a picture of my plant here. My orchid which needs to be watered today let's move this stuff out of the way change it make sure you spin it back to normal mode and it's all automatic exposure automatic everything oops putting my finger in front of the lens sorry about that y'all so as you can see, that one's coming out already. Hasn't even been a minute yet. They develop pretty fast and the exposure is looking really good. The automatic exposure. The problem a lot of people have with the other Instax cameras is that you have to choose exposure. You have to tell it if you want to have it lighter or darker. Like I have the Instax wide. If you don't put lighten or darken, it, it might get bad exposure. This right here, exposure is looking really good. I didn't have good lighting. Uh, but it did a great job. So we're going to take um, one more picture of this plant here. Okay. Uh, and we'll let that kind of develop. I'm going to twist this off. You just twist it to turn it off. I'm going to let that develop and I'll show you some of the differences between this one and the Instax Wide. So here we have the Instax Wide. On the back you can see that there are a couple of different options. First of all on the front there's a totally different setup. Now, I love the Instax wide because the pictures are so much bigger. On the front, you have this power button here, which turns it on. But you do also have another focus option, which gives you a macro mode. If you turn it that way, press it again, and it goes back to um, normal. On the front here, we have two this same similar modes. But on the back, well, let's look at the side profile first. The side profile, if we turn this off, you're seeing that you have a much thicker piece of equipment right here. Almost two of these can fit. On the back is where you see the major differences. Here on the back, you have nothing but the counter, which shows we have eight prints left. On this back, you have a couple of different options. 
First you have a digital screen and then you have a lighten and darken mode. Press it once you get lighten, press it twice you get darken. And for some reason it's not focusing. And um, press it a third time it goes off. You can have a force flash mode or flash auto mode, but basically the flash is gonna go off pretty much all the time. Um, there is no flash off button on this one. This camera has no options at all because it's meant to be fully automatic. You turn it on, you take your picture, and you have a fun time. Uh, the problem I have with this camera is that if you don't pick lighten or darken correctly, like if you're in a house in inside a building, you're going to need to do light mode every time. If you're outside, like in harsh daylight, you're going to have to do darken mode every time. You're never just going to turn this on and take a picture and get a great picture. Um, some people are not going to like that. I love this because this is really the only good quality wide camera. There's other wide cameras out there made by different companies. I wouldn't suggest them. This is the easiest one to use, but you have to be aware of lighten and darken mode. This is supposed to have fully automatic. And we're gonna take a look at our other picture that came out. Now this one came out a little blurry because I should have put it on macro mode since I was very close to the plant. This picture came out excellent. It looks really good. So I'm very happy with the results here. I'm gonna take another picture of my plant uh, before I, you know, quit for the day, I guess. <laughs> I'll probably mess around with it more, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That is Instax new SQ1 unboxing and testing. And what I suggested, I mean, totally. Um, it So far, the two pictures I took, they look great. Even the blurry one looks great. It has kind of a nice vibe about it. But especially the selfie looks really good. This selfie came out excellent. So if you like square pictures, they're about two and a half by two and a half inches square. And you like the colors of Fuji, which I do love the Fuji film colors more so than the Polaroid colors. The, the square film is the most expensive. They're about a dollar each. If you want big film, bigger than the mini, but you, you, know, you might need to fiddle with settings a little bit, Grab this guy, which is, I think, $100, $120. The film, 70 cents each. And the minis, which I also have a mini camera, those are about 60 cents each. So, you know, they go up in price, the square ones being the most costly. But the price on these square guys should come down because they had the, the square is the newest of all the film formats that they've created. Anyway, that's it for my unboxing. Hope y'all enjoyed it. And I don't know, maybe I'll do some more videos like this. Maybe not. In the meantime, in between time, stay holy, my friends, and peace out.